G'day, Benjo from Jungle Masters. I uh, just thought, uh, well first of all I should apologise for not having posted a video for quite a long time. Uh, I've been having technical issues with my camera. Uh, it's a waterproof camera, um, so it's, it's ideal for this environment, but uh, nothing stands proof against the rainforest forever. Uh, or me for that matter, turns out it was uh, an operator error uh, all along. Anyway, um, I've stopped today to talk to you about these um, ghillie ponchos. Um, those of you that do nature photography, that hunt survivalists, will all be familiar with a ghillie suit. Um, the traditional ghillie suit has arms and legs, has trousers, a jacket, a hood, um, often a bit of stuff to, to wrap around your gear. Uh, First of all, they're heavy. Um, even though they're, they're usually built on a light mesh frame, like the, the inside shirt that all the, the hanging offy bits, for want of a more technical term, um, it is a very light mesh normally. They're still heavy to wear because at the end of the day, you're wearing a fur coat. Um, it's not made out of fur, it's usually made out of burlap or hashing or something like that. Um, so they're, they're bulky, they're hot. Um, they weigh a ton when they get wet. Um, all those individual fibres and strands are, have the ability to hold a certain amount of water. And when you add all that up across all the strands, um, that's a lot of water. Um, yeah, uh, and, and they can be quite expensive. There's some cheap ones coming out of China now, so they're not too bad. But at the end of the day, it still doesn't fix the problem that they're, they're bulky, um, they're heavy, they get wet, um, they don't pack down very well. Um, there's a multitude of reasons why I prefer this poncho. This poncho will pack up into quite a small uh, package. Um, I took a photo just before I took it off my, my, my hay harness there. Um, so I'll put the photo in somewhere here. Um, you'll see how small it packs down and that includes the belt that I wear around the waist and a shamar that I have uh, to cover my head if I so choose as well. Um, obviously today I'm just using the snood. Um, packs down nice and small. It's very, very light. You can see if I uh, can, can get the, uh, the sunlight right, um, it, it's almost transparent. Uh, that means it's very, very light. It also means it doesn't hold water. Um, it's a synthetic material. Um, it's basically a, a sheet of the synthetic material printed with the pattern over which are uh, added these cut out uh, leaf patterns, if you like. And that's what does a really good job of breaking up the outline. And speaking of breaking up the outline, another thing is uh, while a traditional ghillie suit um, does break up the outline well, it still gives you the basic structure of a person. So you've still got a, a head, shoulders, arms, torso, legs. Um, this is a hood and a blob, basically. Um, now, obviously, you know, you could, you could uh, change your outline as a person uh, in a traditional ghillie suit as well. But you'll see with these the arms almost disappear and the legs are nowhere near as obvious. So that's another reason I like this, but like having a poncho um, instead of a, a jacket and pants. Uh, another thing is um, because it's open like this, uh, you get better airflow. And because the material is so light, you get better airflow. So it's a lot, wear, lot cooler to wear for extended lengths of time. Um, like a traditional ghillie suit, it, it's not very good for just walking. Uh, it will snag everything. Despite the fact that this doesn't have all those strands, it still has bits that stick out and the open weave of the fabric means it will pick up every bit of weight a while and, and you know, whatnot that you go past. So I don't recommend you actually walk in it, but you can stalk in it. And certainly if you're uh, just brunk, you know, hunkering down and hiding, it's absolutely perfect. You stop moving and this thing practically disappears works very well in the rainforest. It's, it's a, uh, it, it, I, I'm not sure whether it's a, a European or American pattern, um, more reminiscent of, of their, you know, uh, temperate rainforest, uh, but it works very well in the, uh, the tropical rainforest here. The colours match the leaf litter, etc. very well, um, with the odd green bit, um, which, you know, you'll see there, so you, you probably saw well, I hope you saw before I came out just how well it disappears into the undergrowth. Um, I think that was about everything I wanted to cover. Um, it's shape or shapelessness, it's weight or weightlessness, 
Um, it's not terribly resistant, but it, it is good uh, when you're stalking. Oh, that's what I was going to add too. You'll notice I'm wearing a belt around it. Um, I almost always belt the front, but I leave the back loose. So the back is like a cape and uh, helps maintain the shapelessness of it. Um, but the front I belt because uh, often when I'm stalking, I'll have the bow with me and uh, it enables me to draw the bow, etc., without the poncho um, getting in the way or snagging in things in front of me. So no matter what I'm doing, whether I'm using the camera or whatever, um, the front of me is, is controlled by the belt. The back of me can just hang loose and, and maintain the shapelessness um, of the poncho. Um, and I find this is, this is very effective. Um, also with the walking too, um, especially when you're walking uphill and you, you, you're stepping up, um, with a regular poncho, if that's hanging straight down, you may actually step on the front of the poncho. By belting the waist, that no longer happens. So I can I can move uphill effectively with the belt wasted, uh, waist belted. Um, it, it's just a, a very simple cloth belt with, with a double D loop. Um, you know, you can use whatever belt you like. When I uh, stow this away, um, I'll have the, the poncho and the shamar rolled up and then the belt just goes around the outside and that, that's actually what helps hold it in uh, hold it in shape um, before I, I start. Like for storage, uh, I use the belt also to uh, keep it stayed nice and rolled up. And that's about it. Anyway, so glad to be back. Um, I, I actually tried to film this, this same thing uh, about five times, but like I said, I've been having camera problems, so I finally sorted that out. So it's great to be back. It's another beautiful sunny winter's day uh, in the, the rainforests of uh, Ella Bay. Uh, which you've probably seen uh, on some of my other videos. The uh, temperature is, I would guesstimate it, around 25 degrees, so it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and the humidity, we, we've had, we had rain yesterday, we've had rainy days. Uh, the creek just down that way is flowing. Uh, there's still sufficient water moving through, so the humidity's up there a little bit, but I mean, at 25 degrees, it's, it's a hell of a lot better than 35 degrees. So, uh, you know, I might bump into you in the, uh, the, the rainforest one day, if you can see me, if I can see you. I'll catch you later. Bye.